Hey there, welcome to Pepper Geek. In today's video, I'll share an overview on plant nutrients and how to properly fertilize peppers. So I would like to be as thorough and objective as I can in this video. There's a lot to cover in the world of plant nutrients, so I'd like to try to give you a knowledge base that you can use to then go out and make your own informed decision when you're buying fertilizer. I'll start by covering the three primary nutrients, nitrogen, phosphorus, and potassium. Then we'll talk about some secondary nutrients, calcium, magnesium, and sulfur. And I'll briefly touch on some micronutrients as well. Towards the end of the video, I'll talk more about how to actually fertilize pepper plants and what our specific methods are, some of the products that we use. And if you just like that sort of recommendation, you're just here for a quick answer, there will be timestamps available for you to skip around to the portion of the video that you're interested in. Now before I get started, please hit that like button and subscribe to Pepper Geek for more videos like this. So let's start with the three major nutrients, nitrogen, phosphorus, and potassium. On any fertilizer that you buy, there will be three numbers prominently displayed somewhere on the packaging, and those numbers correspond to the percentages of those nutrients contained in that fertilizer. It's commonly referred to as NPK, N for nitrogen, P for phosphorus, and K for potassium, K being potassium's letter on the periodic table. So let's break down those three nutrients and talk about what each of them do for plant growth. Nitrogen is the most essential nutrient for plants because it's used to produce proteins. Proteins are used by all living things to carry out various functions of life, from antibodies to repairing tissue, and in a plant's case, photosynthesis. To make proteins, plants require oxygen, carbon, hydrogen, and nitrogen. The first three of those things plants can acquire from the air and from water, so you never really need to worry about an oxygen deficiency in your plants. And if you do, you probably have bigger problems than tending to your peppers. But nitrogen, even though it is abundant in our air, plants can't actually use that gaseous form of nitrogen. So they acquire nitrogen from the soil, from decaying organic matter, which is converted into nitrates and ammonium salts by microorganisms. <sighs> That's the natural way that nitrogen is provided to plants, but of course there are inorganic fertilizers that are basically chemicals that can provide the nitrogen to plants as well. If there's not enough nitrogen, your plants can't produce proteins and thus the plants will slow down and stop growing and eventually die. Nitrogen is especially important for strong, healthy, leafy growth. So a deficiency in nitrogen will often present itself with slow growth or no growth and yellowing leaves. We've talked about yellowing leaves on pepper plants on the channel before. Nitrogen deficiency is one of the most common culprits. Some good natural sources of nitrogen are rotted manures and compost, and the most common inorganic form of nitrogen is ammonium nitrate. You have to be careful with inorganic fertilizers because the nitrogen is readily available to the plants and it's usually in a very high concentration, making it very easy to burn your plants. So you'll end up with these brown spots at the edges of your leaves. That's basically nutrient burn. Organic fertilizers, on the other hand, take much longer to break down and become a usable form of nitrogen for your plants, making them a lot safer. Okay, nutrient number two, phosphorus, is used in the plant to convert light energy into ATP. This happens during photosynthesis, and ATP is the primary molecule for storing energy in the plants. It's then used throughout the plant to power other functions like root growth and flower development, so it's essential from day one all the way through to harvest. A deficiency in phosphorus will present itself with slow growth and pale yellowing leaves, similar to a nitrogen deficiency. Some common sources include rock phosphate, bone meal, and seabird guano. Finally, the third major plant nutrient is potassium. Again, potassium is needed for photosynthesis and it helps moderate water uptake from the roots. On the flip side, it helps to reduce water loss through transpiration through the leaves of your plants. In addition, it helps increase the overall health and strength of your plants and it improves flower production and fruit setting. Potassium deficiencies will result in yellowing or purpling leaf coloration and poor flowering and fruit setting. We can add potassium to the soil with minerals such as sulfate of potash or langbionite. Okay, with the three major nutrients covered, let's go over some secondary nutrients quickly. Calcium helps transport nutrients between cells and it activates certain enzymes, and without enough of it, you'll see blossom end rot. Common applications include limestone or bone meal. Magnesium is also important for photosynthesis and in moving phosphates throughout the plants. A deficiency here will result in yellowing between the veins of your leaves, making it easy to distinguish between this and a nitrogen deficiency. Epsom salts are a very cheap and easy way to provide magnesium. Finally, sulfur is used by plants to create chloroplasts, making it essential for photosynthesis. However, sulfur is rarely deficient, especially in industrial countries where it basically rains from the skies as sulfur dioxide. A few honorable mentions in the world of plant Plant micronutrients include silicone, which helps increase disease resistance and plant strength, iron, manganese, copper, boron, zinc, and many others. 
Okay, so now let's switch gears and talk specifically about fertilizing peppers. I'll break this section down into potted plants and in-ground planting, but first I wanna give a very general overview. In the first half of a pepper plant's life, from seedling stage all the way through to producing flowers outdoors, we use a higher nitrogen fertilizer. Then we'll switch over to something with lower nitrogen and higher phosphorus and potassium for good, healthy fruit set. Nitrogen will be the most important nutrient to control throughout the life cycle of your pepper plants, and I'll explain why in just a minute. So with that, let's start with container gardening. Growing in pots is a lot different than growing in the ground because you're essentially creating an entire soil ecosystem from scratch each year. You have to make sure that your pepper plants are gonna get everything that they need from that soil. So it's much more common to see nutrient deficiencies and to have to correct for them in potted plants than in the ground. When we're growing peppers in pots, we start them in a seed starter mix like this one right here. It does not contain any nutrients. And after about a week or so, we start fertilizing with half strength fish and seaweed fertilizer. This just provides just what the plants need to get off to a strong start. Once they're two or three weeks old, they're about two or three inches tall, they're ready to be transplanted into slightly larger pots. At that point, we switch over to a proper potting mix, something that has nutrients built in, and we begin fertilizing at full strength. Now, thankfully, you don't have to think too hard about picking a potting mix. Find something organic if you can, something that is made for potted vegetable plants. When we move the plants into their final growing containers, a large pot in most cases, we'll usually amend with either bone meal or seabird guano for phosphorus and calcium, and this is usually enough to provide for the plant throughout the year. Here's one example of an organic fertilizer that contains high levels of nitrogen. You'll see it has an 11% nitrogen rate, 3% phosphorus, and 8% potassium. It also contains calcium, copper, iron, manganese, zinc. This has been great because for one, it's cheap, but it's also water soluble, which makes it very easy to apply when you're watering. We'll continue Continue using that high nitrogen fertilizer until the plant has been outside for two to four weeks, until the plants have reached a relatively mature size, at that point we will reduce nitrogen significantly. Since we've been feeding regularly, we know the plant has plenty of nitrogen, but now we want it to switch gears and start to produce flowers and fruits. So unless you live in the tropics where you don't have to worry about the approaching winter, you definitely want to reduce nitrogen about halfway through the season, and this applies to potted plants and in-ground plants as well. However, you don't want to stop providing nutrients. The plants still need potassium and phosphorus to get good fruit sets. So you can either continue using the fertilizer that you're using just at a reduced rate, or you can try to find something that has a higher phosphorus and potassium level and a lower nitrogen level. And that's basically it for potted plants. We just continue that regimen throughout the season. And of course, we are watchful for any signs of deficiencies. And then you can side dress with the appropriate amendment as needed. Now for in-ground plants, things are a little bit different. And I wanna talk more about living soil. I mentioned earlier that the usable nitrates are produced when microorganisms break down organic material in the soil, making it available to plants through their root system. Now this doesn't just happen overnight, unfortunately. It comes from years of nurturing your soil and adding new organic material year after year. It's well worth your effort though, because in most cases, ground soil will contain all of the nutrients that your plants need and then some, and the plants and the microorganisms will work in a symbiotic relationship together to produce a really strong, healthy plant. I recommend if you have a raised bed or a garden bed to send away a soil sample and just see what's in your soil as it is. If you're starting from scratch, you might have to do a lot of work, but if you have an older bed and you've been adding compost to it, you might not need to fertilize at all. But the same principles are true. Too much nitrogen can be a bad thing and can lead to a pepper bush rather than actually growing peppers. So make sure you're not adding too much nitrogen later in the season when the plants are trying to produce fruits. So now I'll give a few recommendations of fertilizers that we have used with success. Check the links in the description for where you can buy any of these products and for an updated list of our current fertilizer recommendations. Fox Farm makes a great trio of fertilizers. They're great for beginners because you start with the Grow Big formula for vegetative growth, and then you switch over to Big Bloom and Tiger Bloom when your plants are producing flowers. The only drawback here is that these are not organic, but they are water soluble, so they're very easy to apply. Espoma's Garden Tone is a great organic option. The drawback here is that this is not a water soluble formula, so it's a slow release granular fertilizer, best when worked into soil before transplanting. It also contains beneficial bacteria species, which will help enrich the soil. I like using this one in conjunction with other fertilizers and amendments. If you're looking for an all natural fertilizer, Back guano is high in nitrogen. Seabird guano is great for calcium and phosphorus. The only thing that's missing from this formula is potassium, but you can add that through another amendment. With both of them, you can apply it as a side dress, work it into the soil, or steep it into water and apply it through watering. 
Neptune's Harvest is a fish and seaweed fertilizer. It is a very low percentage formula, but it's great for early growth and just as an amendment throughout the season. It's water soluble, it's very easy to apply, and it's very hard to overfeed with this. And Performance Organics from miracle Grow is a great all-purpose fertilizer. They also make a tomato-based formula, which is supposed to be great as well. But this formula has worked great for us. It's easy, it's cheap, you apply it through the water, and it's pretty hard to go wrong. And that's gonna be it for this video. I hope it was helpful to you. If you have any questions or suggestions when it comes to feeding peppers, let us know in the comments below. We'd love to see your suggestions, and we're always learning. Thanks for liking and subscribing to Pepper Geek, and I'll see you next time.